Ben, thanks very much for joining us here today. Um, so we're going to talk about the newly declared air defence identification zone in the East China Sea. Um, how do you read China's declaration of the zone? What do you think is particularly important about it? I think uh, there's a couple of things uh, to consider. Um, the first one is that on the strategic level, I think it should be clearly seen as uh, China to sending a signal um, to the region. Um, it is part of a broader push to establish um, Chinese um, um, hegemonic claims, um, which includes um, the East Sea. Uh, it also sends a message uh, particularly to Japan and the United States because the um, air defense identification zone significantly overlaps with the uh, Senkaku um, Islands uh, dispute um, with Japan. Um, so I think China by and large sends a message uh, and the message is um, we um, have claims in the region um, and we are willing to, um, yeah, to follow through on, on our claims. Um, including um, this new zone that they have established. So we, we've seen strong responses from Japan, from the United States, as well as from uh, South Korea and responses from Taiwan. Um, this will obviously have some impact on regional stability. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, there, there is quite a debate on, 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 on what the uh, implications are. And um, I think um, optimists have argued that it actually makes um, crisis stability or crisis management um, easier mm -hmm. um, because uh, China has put down some lines um, in, in the sand. Um, I must say that I'm rather in the, um, in the camp of the pessimists um, because I think um, actually it will exacerbate um, fears um, in the region about uh, China's uh, real intentions. Um, it will make uh, crisis stability much more difficult um, because as we know from history, um, crisis uh, management is an extremely difficult um, undertaking um, and you will see responses um, I think um, not just from Japan and the United States but other countries um, they will think about their responses um, they will um, try to um, balance them um, against those um, developments therefore by and large I think it is um, a potentially negative um, impact has a potentially negative impact on the region um, with so many of Australia's uh, close friends uh, in that part of the world, as well as uh, our, our friends and uh, major economic partner China, um, what do you think of Australia's response, which has obviously been very uh, much to support the Japanese and American side of this particular dispute? Um, and what impacts do you think it might have in our foreign and defence policy in the future? Well, I belong to, to those um, who actually support um, Australia's um, firm response. Um, I think um, the foreign minister and uh, the prime minister um, were right in uh, making clear that Australia does not uh, see this as a useful step in terms of promoting regional stability. We are not only um, in line with our American ally uh, and Japan, we are in the same camp as um, South Korea. We are even in the same camp as the European Union who also has made clear that it does not see this as a as, as useful step. So I think uh, in, in this sense, um, uh, China um, knowingly or unknowingly um, pushed um, Australia into a corner where it could not act otherwise than to, um, um, you know, to show the colors. Um, what that means um, uh, in the future is that um, a, um, our relationship with China be might become potentially more complicated. Um, as we know, um, the Prime Minister, for example, has set a very ambitious goal of uh, negotiating an FTA agreement within a year. Uh, I think it will just add to a, a long list of uh, potential frictions um, in, in the relationship, particularly if China continues um, um, declaring additional um, air defense identification zones, for example, in the South China Sea. What it also means, I think, is that on the working level, we will even move closer to um, the United States. We will, um, as the Minister of Defense um, just last night announced, um, increase defense cooperation um, with Japan. So what this basically means is that uh, it will become much more difficult um, for, for Australia to basically sail between um, the United States um, and China. Uh, you, you touched there on a very interesting point about what we can expect China to do next. And you mentioned a potential air defence identification zones in the South China Sea. Can we just explore briefly what other 
well, that and what other possibilities might exist for Chinese response mm. to, uh, well, the Chinese response to everybody else's yeah. response to their declaration? Well, when, if, we, if we stick with um, the one in, um, you know, over the Senkaku Islands for, for a minute, I mean, what, what will happen most likely and what will be very interesting to watch is how China actually moves to implement it because it has already started uh, scrambling fighter jets um, after it was unable um, and or unwilling um, you know, to uh, counter the American move to fly two uh, B-52 bombers through the zone. Now it reacts more actively um, and that means we will have a constant or the possibility of sort of constant um, interaction in the air, particularly between Chinese uh, and Japanese fighters and that makes for potentially very volatile uh, environment. If we're looking at uh, potential um, IDZs uh, in the South China Sea, um, if that happens, and um, for example the Vietnamese are um, already quite um, wary about that possibility and they expect that to happen, um, don't know when, but we all assume that it will happen, um, that even complicates um, um, the situation because that raises um, the bar um, to include South China Sea. It again puts the Americans in a very difficult position um, to show their commitment, but unlike um, in the case of Japan, the US does not have the same you know, strong defense ties, uh, making an American response um, quite difficult. And for Australia, it means that, well, the problem comes even closer to home because the South, South China Sea is an area of, of key strategic interest uh, to, to Australia. And we will probably be asked by some of our Southeast Asian countries, uh, uh, Southeast Asian friends and, and partners, what we are going to do about this. The whole, you know, come back to your early, the key question that you raised, the whole question that I think we're facing is, is that part of a deliberate, well thought through Chinese strategy of, you know, calculated moves and, and counter moves where at the end China is getting something? And I think there are two ways of looking at it. One way says, yes, it is. It is salami slicing. And in the end, China will be able to establish um, a broader um, sphere of influence in, in the region simply because regional p countries and the United States are unwilling and or unable to you know, firmly contest um, these Chinese moves. The other school argues that, um, well, even if China would want to play that game of chess, um, well, it takes two. And at some point there are miscalculations um, and um, and other countries will strongly react to that um, in the end, um, leading to a net loss um, for, for China. And I think everyone um, looks at the advantages that China has, but I am of the strong belief that, that we need to focus also more on the, the disadvantages that China faces, including um, you know, um, through declaring an ADIZ. You know, it creates a counter reaction. It does not minimize the problem that China faces because of its uh, particular geostrategic um, location, basically surrounded by um, critical or, um, shall we say, more than critical um, um, countries. And it invites the Americans back in. Mm. Um, it even invites Australia or forces players such as Australia to show their colors. Perhaps on that point in particular, I could press you to, to just expand a little bit on what you think the impact will be uh, on the rebalance for this strong American, both for the declaration of uh, the air defense identification zone uh, and America's strong support of Japan. Mm. I think um, one of the big, biggest winners actually could be those countries who have a strong interest in the rebalance and had some, some you know, concerns about um, the US making true on its, on its uh, rebalance, including in Australia. Um, I think it pushes um, the Americans into, yeah, as I said, into a corner. It, it, it basically um, shows to Washington, look, you have to act. You cannot do nothing. This is where um, the, the game is, um, and China will not stop. It won't stop. It will keep pushing and pushing and pushing. And I think, um, you know, it, it's, it, after 2010, when China um, suddenly displayed a more assertive position in the South China Sea, for example, everyone said, oh, the Chinese learn. You know, the Chinese cannot have an interest in this continuing. And the Chinese cannot have an interest in 
basically pushing the Americans to do to do what they did, namely more forcefully um, um, reassert their position. But China continues um, to, to push the Americans, and, and I think I'm one of those who think that the Americans actually <clears throat> will have the will and the capacity um, to to make well to implement um, the root balance. Ben, it's been fascinating talking to you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.